communicate through phone. Because like a cat person will also love dogs, but dog people ask us if a cat personally sold their finances. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a difference between the pets, because um, a dog may smell another dog on you and sulk for a while, whereas a cat doesn't care if you're cheating on it, okay? A cat is cheating on you. They're pretty glamorous <laughs> pets. One owner cannot satisfy them. <laughs> Your cat is going from garden to garden, getting all the nibbles and belly rubs like a slut. <laughs> I also think cat people are like smarter or have a higher EQ. Cause like, it's easy to love something that blindly loves you back. But it takes real cuts to love something that'll eat you once you die. <laughs> I, uh, I recently moved house and I moved from a shitty area that's known for crackheads to a really nice area. And you'd think I'd be happy about that. But the thing is, an area that's known for crime, for the residents are already nice, is way better than a desperate housewife situation. Those areas where nothing ever really happens, those are where the real sickos are at, you know? A <laughs> dad keeping his daughter in the basement, a human centipede, satanic <laughs> rituals, you know, the list goes on. Um, <laughs> but um, actually, I was a bit of a sociopath as a child. Um, <laughs> But no, I would despise certain things and certain people. So I'm going to read to you a list of things that I despise, ranking them from very irritating to I wouldn't mind if there was a genocide. <laughs> Number one, vegans. Not for, the, not for the obvious reasons, but because they make the rest of us look bad. Number two, people who are obsessed with celebrities. Because that's dumb. Even celebrities don't like each other. Number three, self-hating white people. We get it, you're not racist, you don't have to prove anything. <laughs> Number four, Beyonce fans. It's a cult, it's a cult. <laughs> Beyonce can literally murder someone live on stage and her fans would be like, yes honey. <laughs> Woo. Number five, people who have those inspirational quotes like live, love, laugh. Yes. Nothing makes me want to support terrorism more than those <laughs> Not a boomer, a zoomer, which means I was born in the very late 90s and I'm better than you. Um, no, no. Um, my generation's kind of fucked up. I see tweets from men who want big breasted women to breastfeed them, and I just keep thinking every day we're getting closer to proving Sigmund Freud right. But um, I have a healthy relationship with my parents. It's not like I seek approval from strangers in any way. Um, <laughs> But no, my parents say they're proud of me no matter what I do, and I have that Friday for future reference, because my brother's a lawyer, but how I see it is that one of us talks bullshit to a room full of old people, and the other one's a comedian. <laughs> um, I hate telling people I'm a comedian, because um, they always say two things. The first being, oh, are you going to write a joke about me? Like, sure, I'm going to write a joke about a 30-year-old alcoholic who thinks the Big Bang Theory should have won an Oscar. <laughs> The second thing they say is, how come you're a comic? Like, as if I was born from a long legacy of comedians. But the truth is, obviously I wasn't born a comedian. I went through comedic conversion therapy. Which is where they lock me in a room and play nothing but Seinfeld and come out funny. Uh, we live in progressive times. Did you know there are 64 genders? 64, okay, that's more variation than there is pick and mix. But honestly, I couldn't care less if you identify as him, her, Zim, Zer, or fucking Teletubby. One thing I don't get is people who are polyamorous. Like, how would you break up with someone? Would you get together in a group and vote them off like Love Island? <laughs> Speaking of Love Island, we just got a new season, and uh, I don't really get that show. Like, the premise of it is that they get a bunch of attractive people, give them all Stockholm Syndrome, and watch them pair off. I propose they make that show much more interesting by giving one of them an incurable disease, something nice like hepatitis, um, not tell the others which one it was, and just watch this panic ensue. Yeah, I made it to a psychiatrist. Hey, that's me. Thank you so much.